Welcome to Welcome to Brooks Knows Baseball. 30 breakouts in 30 days. Today we are heading up to the rain, moist, wet ground at Soap Seattle, Washington to cover the Seattle Mariners, a team who really broke through last year finally after not breaking through for the last 20 Is years. The field wet? Probably. No, they have a roof and a train. Well, Okay. Um, I would be willing to say, and for the last thirty years, this is the most underachieving franchise in baseball. Would you agree? No. So you think a team that wins one hundred sixteen games and loses in the AFC doesn't get beat handily is not a letdown? They're coming. Yeah. Well, they've been okay. So let's go over the playoff run. So in twenty twenty two. They lost in the ALDS, got swept. Bye. Bye. Uh, I'm assuming, was it Houston? It's my guess. I don't know if it's off, off my head, and my computer's too slow to try it right now. So, um, <laughs> after Houston, or after that series, I mean, you have to go back to 2001. Well, last time they made a play, so over 20 years. Um, and bef- they, they've never won a, a World Series. We've only made the playoffs five times since 1977. So, yeah, very underachieving organization out in Seattle. Um, but they do have some great players such as Ken Griffey, Chiro, King Felix, Randy Johnson, um, Aroid. And, you Aaron know, so, Boone. So good... Yeah, Aaron Boone. Um, Brett Boone, Brett Boone, Brett Boone. And you can't forget Harold Reynolds and Mitch Hanager. Love Mitch Reynolds. But, yeah, so – that is the Seattle Mariners. They again, they, they made the playoffs last year, finishing ninety wins and seventy two losses, um, and they that was the exact same record the year before. So two years winning records in a row, finally breakthrough form. But without further ado, John, I'll let you take this one away because I'm sure you got a man crush on uh, Julio Rodriguez. He's good, but no. Um, is, he, is he Tim Anderson good? Oh come on now, there's not many like that. Um, did you mention when you mentioned their past players real quick? Did you mention the hit machine, Edgar Martinez? No, I didn't. Okay, you got to mention him. You mentioned Seattle, and okay. I didn't mention Kyle Seager either. Sorry, uh, it's consistent. Let's say that. Uh, anyway, acquisitions they got T. Oscar Hernandez, outfielder from Toronto, Colton Wong, who's basically claimed to fame as one playoff series. Um, Cooper Hummel, catcher, outfitter. Hell, I don't know if he'll make the team. Uh, pitcher, relief pitcher, right-hander, Trevor Gott. I say go right into the rotation. Uh, good rotation. What do you think? Well, um, yeah, it's not bad. They got Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, uh, Robbie Ray, who's he's solid always, George Kirby, and then Marco Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez may not win that spot. Chris Flexen may take over. Marco Gonzalez is fading fast. Um, he doesn't throw hard anymore. His pitches don't work. He's not too good anymore. But when you get Castillo, you know, he got him from what, Cincinnati, 25 starts, 299 ERA. Yeah. Whip was 108, four seam fastball that moves. He's durable. Gilbert, he's one of the best young pitchers in baseball. I mean, he's made a buttload of starts in two years, pitched a lot of innings, man. Uh, had a what thirteen and six record last year, three two ERA. Um, yeah, thirty two starts, one eighteen WHIP. Fastball change sinker guy pitched a lot of innings. Uh, there, you know, I was that may be a concern. You know, sometime they baby pitcher so much today. You know, the guy probably has thrown three hundred fifty innings in two years, and I'm seeing oh they might have to watch him. Really, hell, Jim Palmer threw that in a year. Uh, Robbie Ray. He's up and down his whole career. I believe he started with the Nationals as a draft pick way back when. Uh, 12 and 12, 371 ERA. You know. He did start the Nationals, yeah. 12 round yeah. pick. 119 whip. Uh, gave up 32 home runs if I, if I check my stats correctly. Whoa. 32, man. Whoa, is right. Fastball change sinker guy. George Kirby's interesting. He was a rookie. Uh, Kirby, 25 starts as a rookie, 339 ERA, 121 whip. Kirby had a solid war again last year. He had a three war, which isn't bad for, you know, 130 innings, a 3-3 ERA. His projection this year, 
um, more innings and a uh, ERA slightly yeah. higher from what I've seen. A lot here. of promise with him. Um, 95 mile an hour fastball. Part, yeah, 95 mile an hour fastball. Said his his curve and cutter needs a little bit of work to sharpen him up a little bit. And we already touched on Gonzalez. So Chris Flexen, like his, he made uh, several starts out of the bullpen as spot starter, so he may take that role. Yeah, I've heard they were trying to get rid of him in the offseason, but I don't guess they found any takers. But uh, when you move to the pen, you got Paul Seward. Uh, he's the closer, three-quarter angle guy. Slider, fastball, 93, a lot of spin. Uh, then, I tell you, then they got uh, Andres Munoz start out with the Padres. I like him. He used to use him in uh, MLB whatever game. Uh, sure. place. Uh, pardon? Yeah, the show. The show, yeah. He, uh, 65 games. No, 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 no. That's 65 games for Seward. Um, uh, Munoz, 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Got a heck of a slider, so I guess basically that's what he relies on. Big strikeout guy, uh, two four nine ERA, point eight nine whip. He brings the heat, man. Yeah, now, I think he's Mexican. What, is he on the Mexican roster? I don't know. Uh, then they got Matt Brash, a spot starter relief pitcher. His numbers were nothing spectacular. One and a half plus whip. Uh, Diego Castillo, slider fastball guy, fifty nine games, three six four ERA, one fourteen whip. Uh, pin pin Murph uh, pin. Murphy. Now he was interesting. He's like a 28 year old rookie, I guess. Last year, put uh-huh. a great number, 64 games, below three ERA, point nine five WHIP as a rookie. Sidearm slider, really tough on right handers. He he, I've seen him numerous times. He he looked pretty good. Any anything else you like to add about the bullpen? No, I think you got it. Now I, you know we should go ahead and jump right on into this. Well, I know you were talking bad about Cal Raleigh, but I, I got some things to say about him. So you tell me what you think about him. I think a guy who strikes up 30% of the time is not a good player. Well, he's a color we North Carolina resident. That's good, native. But what the hell does that have to do with him being a good or bad baseball player? Because I'm partial to Western Carolina baseball players. Um, 27 homers and only 370 at bats. That's worth something, isn't it? Uh, boomer bust. He threw out 32% of the runners. Yeah, he strikes out low OB, OBP. Good defensively, man. Got to have a good catcher back there. So a guy who hits 211 has a, over four wars. Pretty impressive. Think about it. Yeah, and, and 327 at-bats. So 370 at-bats. But he, he kind of got better as he went along. As bad as his yeah. average was, it was a lot worse. And it came up, and he's got some power. Um, so I, I don't think he's going to be a problem because of his defense and everything. And then, I mean, hell, if he plays more than that, he's going to have 40 home runs, you know, if he plays behind there every day or close to it. And then, yeah, uh, and then move, moving on, we got Ty France at first base who played 140 games last year. Made the all-star um, team. He's a hitter, you know, 291 is rookie year then two or uh, no, not his rookie year. Sorry. Uh, he had three, 291, 274 last three years. 20 um, homers, 83 RBI. He's a pop. He strikes up 50% of the time. Um, his award only 2.4 last year defensively. I'm not seeing him being a very good defender, though. No, and then, but you go to Colton Wong at second. Uh, I'm thinking the shifts, the shift ban is going to hurt him defensively. Um, to you get offensive production on him, at least moderate offensive production, I'd say. Very moderate. Yeah, 17 steals. He's a 50 guy, you know. You know. He's got good discipline. I don't think he's a liability. No, but. He's old. He's 32 now, so uh, that's usually that first. Yeah. Form. So, um, you know, we'll see. It, defensively, I, from what I've seen, had a fall off last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Big fall off. I've seen negative six. On defense, negative six is not good. No, no. Which is, yeah. Well, so he, moving on, to him, we got a, a shortstop. I'm seeing J.P. Crawford. Yeah, um, J.P. Crawford's kind of up and down. Supposed to be a big player with the Phillies. They get rid of him. But I think they're going to keep him there. You know, it's short, so. But did you he, say. He, I mean, he's a, he hit 240 last year, year before that. Um, you know, 273. Before that, he never really played a full season. Um, 
He doesn't strike out much. That's that's a positive. His rookie year striking out twenty five percent of the time, and he's brought that all the way down to thirteen. So there's some massive improvement there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised for him. You know, he's twenty eight, should be in his prime as well. No power. He's not going to hit more than probably nine or ten home runs at most. Um, but um, he, I, I think he's serviceable. He's above. I, I would say he's probably above average. All right. All right. Then moving uh, on to third base. Sorry. Cut you off there. No, that's Eugenio, all right. Swear it. Eugenio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you're telling me some prediction you read had him going worse. He actually improved last year. 31 homers, 236, which is not like his Cincinnati days. 87 RBIs. He's, he's obviously productive. You got 87 RBIs, 791 OPS. He's a solid defender. What was his war last year? Do you got that? Four. There you go. Um, but he's, he has and I, you know, that's that that's good, but it, and how his, many guys, how his many guys? value, I think, is, I mean, from what it was in 2019 when he hit 271 with 49 home runs to now, he's not the same guy. No, you know, no. he's 31, so he's on the wrong side of 30. I think that's going to hurt him. Um, if you go back, yeah, he raised his batting average last year with 38 points hey, to 236, but- so he was under 200 the year before that, which is just do you uh, think if he would dye his hair one color instead of half black and half blonde on one side black, one side blonde, never seen that before, do you think he might be more consistent? Seattle, you got to look fruity. Mm, okay, yeah, I know people have been there a lot. Um, going to outfield, starting to center field, what can you say? I'll let you handle that one. Julio Rodriguez, the Super reigning, yeah, reigning rookie of the year, had a very – very good debut season last five, year. He's a five-tool player, man. Absolutely. He's 284, 28 home runs, 132 games. But you would like to see that come up, but he was a rookie 25 last year. 25 steals. Yeah, ahead yeah, of over five awards, slugged at 509, 345 on base percent. Um, and but, he can run, 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 which is great. And he's young. He's very young. He's 21 years old. Um, he, he's strikeout rate. What do you think it was? Not too bad. 20? No, it is bad. It's oh. 26%. Well, big big boy hits like that. He'll, and he's young. That'll probably... If he strikes out 26%, he's still hitting 284. That's, I mean, I, he played, uh, what, in A ball when he was, he played 17 games in 2019. He hit 462. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's he's a stud. He's going to, I, I don't think the strikeouts are really going to drop too much, but I do think his average will probably be in the 280s once again. I do think his power is going to increase as he gets a little older, more mature. It's his um, man strength. And he I, should I, have 30 around. Yeah, 30 he'll, he'll probably cut down on strikeouts too, usually. When they get up there, they're going to, and you're sure. Well, last three years is 20, 20, roughly about, or I'm just going to round up here 22%, 18%, and 26%. And then in A ball is twenty two percent. He he strikes out. I mean, I yep. think that might hurt. That, that could hurt his average too, though. Yeah. Well, he strikes out. You can't just rely on. But well, one I want to touch because there's not much more you can say about that guy. Where everybody knows he's good, but yeah, left. You know, looks like it's be Jared uh, Kalanick. Kalanick. Um, bust. You know, super bust. Super bust. But. I uh, was watching some, looking at his stats, uh, and I seen it last week. I seen it, he'd already has four home runs this year. They had, he had changed his batting stance, his stance a little bit, but the way he's holding the bat, gripping it more loose, and he's hitting. You know, he everywhere he's been in the minors, he rips. I mean, so th- th- this may be his last chance. You know, um, he's still young. He'll be twenty four soon, um, yes, and that's gonna hurt him. Well, let's just see what he does because he, everywhere he's been, he's been a, he's hit except the major leagues. I mean, well, that happens. But you know, from what I've seen, he may be coming into his own a little bit. We'll find out here once the, the, the bullet starts. Well, yeah, I would like to see what his strikeout percentage is. Homeboy strike out, struck out thirty four percent of the time last year. Now, he looks lost so far. I mean, this spring he doesn't look I mean, previous. He had one forty one. Man, that's rare to see a, a grade A prospect like that just completely be i mean he hits good in triple a but he gets to the majors and he's just damn boom nothing i mean he's damn near nothing he, I mean, trade for him? uh that was, it was, that was it no, diaz yeah. and, and cano maybe 
it was uh, Mets. Yeah, he went? with the Mets. Was, I know it's Edwin Diaz. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, well, I think I know who won that trade. Yeah, right field looks like it's going to be T. Oscar Hernandez. He's a productive player. Uh, 25 homers, 77 RBIs, 267 hitter, uh, strong arm, power bat. You know, um, where to get him? Toronto. Uh, so well, let's see. Yeah. Trade with Toronto this offseason. Right, 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 right. And then I guess DH. I don't see anything at DH for them. Because I'm looking at one thing. Oh, Chuck. Yeah, I looked at him and forgot about that. Yeah, he'll probably, if, and he's old as dirt. Yeah, if, if Klonic don't pan out, he'll probably be out there or be DH. Yeah, I'm, and that's, that's yeah, probably he right. Had a little bit of pop left. You know, he hit 14 home runs last year, um, had a positive one barely. He's hurt all the time. Yeah. yeah. He spends a lot of time out. Yeah, uh, Taylor uh, Trammell. Down, 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 down. So we'll, we'll see how he does this year. Taylor Trammell was a prospect at one time, but I wouldn't say he is anymore. Uh, DH Dylan Moore can play some DH, but he don't hit much. Uh, that yeah. they're going to have to do something with some of those guys, maybe. Evan White, do you remember Evan White? It was a big, mm-hmm. big prospect for them, first base. He had before he even made it, they gave him this big contract and extended him. He's been pretty much hurt ever since. Um. You know, that's, that, that's kind. Of, that's kind of like the Phillies. The Phillies with that guy, the infielder. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, um, they got well, shucks. Someone probably knows what I'm talking about. I have to look it up. But the Phillies did the same thing. The guy's never been anything. He played pretty much a whole year at AAA last year. You know, but the, I mean, that's another story about how the Phillies handled him. Anyway, but yeah, about that team, I think. If they're hitting comes around, if Kalani, I mean, some ifs there, you know, um, they're going to be in the race, I think. I don't think they'll win it. But wild card again, maybe. But there's only so many teams that make the wild card. Maybe. Um, I think, all right, so is there anything else before we move on to the prospects you, you want to say about the, uh, the the Mariners? No, I think that's pretty much it. Um I think their general manager obviously does a decent job because they have a lot of young talent in there. Um, but, yeah, you can get to the prospects now. Yep. So from what I'm saying, the prospect system is not ranked very well. Ooh, how about There's- Harry Ford? I saw him on TV last night with uh, t- you know, Team Great Britain. The catcher, yeah. you got him. Yeah, he stole 23 bases he's, last year. He's Hit young. the ball to uh, all fields. Defense is work in progress. He looked all right last night when I saw him. It's the first time I ever saw him, but anyway. I'm sorry, I'll let you go. What about Emerson Hancock? Is he gonna be anything? Hey, Harry Ford is yeah, we'll get to we'll get we'll cover him on, I promise. Well Harry Ford is the their highest rated prospect. He's only forty nine in the top one hundred. Um he's twenty years old and eight ball guy. He's he's little for a catcher and he's only five eleven, just barely two hundred pounds, which is I think undersized for a catcher. Um and then you have Bryce Miller, who's twenty four years old in double A, so take that as you as you will. Um, but that's the only two guys they have in the top 100. So they don't have many guys in the top 100. Yeah. So um, Hancock's to- kind of drifting towards waste, right? What, I, what was he in 20 draft pick? So Emerson Hancock, he's still in double A. He's only 23. Uh, he was drafted first overall, or first round, Down. excuse me, first overall, uh, six overall in 2020. Yeah. See, you know, it's three years later, he's a college pitcher. You know, Double A, he, he's put up good stats in said 33 games. He, he doesn't pitch much, but in 33 games in the minors, he's a 3.4 ERA. So it's not like it's, he's not performing. He needs to be hiring Double A. I mean, his age, and he's got, what, 20, probably didn't pitch, 21, 22. So this year, he's been Triple A. And- He'll be 24 years old in May. Yeah, he needs to, you know, I mean, that's still a young man, but still, come on, you know, what he's wait till he- Prospect system is young, so that could come up if these players actually develop into you know, good players. Like I'm seeing a foreign-born guy here. His name is Felneen Celestin. Celestine. Yep, 17 years old. Is he related so, to the one Celestine on the Twins? No, it's not the same name at all. Celestino, not mm-hmm. Celestine. Okay, well, you know. But, yeah. Hey. Them guys from Dominican places, sometimes they're the same name as their brother. Who knows? They could be related anyway. He might be 26 years old. Who knows? That's true. Very true. Uh, yeah. 
I think did uh, I think their manager their manager oh, are you done with prospects? Yeah, there's there's not that much there for them, so we'll see how that happens. If their young guys develop, it could you know they could definitely climb the rankings next year, be top half team. If their prospects develop, like I'm assuming they hope they will. All right, I think yeah, and Scott Service, I think he's doing a good job, solid job um, developing his young pitchers. You know, like Gilbert and uh, oh, hold on, gotta look at my notes. I forgot his name that quick. The other young pitcher, George Kirby. You know, getting a lot out of those young guys. They're big prospects, though, so. I mean, yeah, but moving on to our record predictions. So, I see them regressing, and the main reason I see them regressing is because of the emergence of the Texas Rangers. I think the Texas Rangers have retooled that their pitching staff with the hitting that they have. I think they're going to be a much, much better team than they were Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that's going to hurt Seattle? Because they play a balanced schedule. Well, because they still played them last year, and they're going to play them. They're still going to play them a lot. No, no just, balanced schedule, no more than anybody else. Well, I just don't think the wins they got last year against them. They're still going to play them. The wins they got against them last year, they're not going to get against well, them. Well, when you go when you go head to head, I mean Castillo can hang with anybody Texas has got, and Gilbert. Yeah. Can. So, I mean, when they – yeah, when they play, those games can go either way. It's not like, oh, DeGrom's facing Castillo. It's over. Castillo's a good pitcher, man. I just think Texas overall is a better team, a better manager. And you know what else, Castillo? He's durable. He makes his starts every year if you look back. You know. We'll see, but we're doing Texas tomorrow so you can see what I predict them to do. But I do predict the Mariners to finish around 500 this year. Excuse me. I disagree. I think a little more, but hey, that's why we're here. We right? disagree, but just know you're wrong. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right. Um, well, yeah, I'm, let's not take up any more time. This this has been uh, 30 breakdowns of 30 days with Brooks and his baseball staff. Like it, share it, comment on us. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, let us know. We are finishing up with the Texas Rangers tomorrow, the American League, and we're going to start on the National League. East is going to be the first team. And who's the first team? Is it Miami? No, Atlanta. That'll be fun. Yeah. One of my, oh, favorite, my favorite teams for years and years and years. But, John, let's just sign up and get him out of here. All right. That's all for now, folks. We'll see you next time on Brooks Knows Baseball. Good night. Good night, John Boy.